Hello there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of the Homestead Journey Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the pursuit of self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability. My name is Brian Wells. I'm coming to you from 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the Homestead Journey. This is episode number four of the Homestead Journey podcast. I hope it finds you well. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us on the Homestead Journey. Well, folks, this week here in beautiful upstate New York, winter arrived and boy, did she arrive with a vengeance. Now, we are used to cold temperatures in upstate New York, uh, but usually it doesn't get quite this cold this quick we actually had i think temps that dipped down into the single digits this week which is well that's pretty cold for early november usually we don't get those temps until january or february time frame but uh right out of the gate bam uh we got hit with that actually my son had his first snow day uh and uh so Winter is here, and she has arrived with a vengeance. Um, And so, obviously, that has had a great impact here on the homestead, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But before we do, I wanted to uh, start out this episode telling you a little bit about where you can find us online, just in case if you want to uh, get in contact with us. I haven't done a real good job of that in the first uh, three episodes, and so I, in fact, in one of them, I actually gave the total wrong email address. So really quickly, we do have a Facebook page for the podcast. It's facebook.com slash the Homestead Journey Podcast. We also have a Facebook page for our farm, which is facebook.com slash 3 ny for New York. We also have a YouTube channel, uh, which is youtube.com slash C as in Charlie slash 3B Farm and Homestead. Not doing a lot of video content right now, uh, apart from posting these podcasts there the Tuesdays following their release on the podcasting platforms, which happens on Mondays. But if you want to jump over there and check out some of our previous video content, uh, feel free to do so. And then we also have a email address. I gave that out totally incorrectly on another episode. The correct email address is the Homestead Journey Podcast at gmail.com. So uh, those are ways you can get in contact with us. Also, if you haven't already and you're enjoying what you're hearing, um, go ahead and pop over to your favorite platform, podcasting platform, and leave us a review. I'd really, really appreciate that and uh, would love to know what you're enjoying about the podcast. And if you hate it, I'd love to know that as well because I want to get better at this. And uh, so obviously any way that uh, any constructive criticism besides you suck and you're a moron, (laughs) um, you know, and maybe that is true, uh, but Please don't say it. It might hurt my feelings a little bit. So anyhow, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Let's jump right into Homestead happening. So what's been going on this week on 3B Farm and Homestead? Well, obviously because of the onslaught of winter, a lot of winter preparations underway. As I've shared with you before, it seems like winter sneaks up on me and I'm never as prepared as I should be. This week, we moved our ducks and geese from where they had been uh, down to their winter quarters, shall we say, which is right next to the chickens. I try to kind of get animals as close together as possible because of the water situation. We don't have any frost-free hydrants out, outside. We do have a, a spigot off the back of the house that I don't like to use in the winter. Um, and so our water comes out of our basement and right now is carted in five gallon buckets or in, um, other jugs. And so I try to get all the animals as close to, as close together as possible, just to minimize the amount of carting of water that we have to do. 
Now we do have some things that uh, are underway. I ordered some parts and pieces for a little bit of a different system to manage the water for the pigs and the ducks and geese. And I'll be sharing a little bit more about that in a future episode dedicated to watering systems. Um, but I did order that this week and I just need to put all of that together. We also, I spent a lot of time today working on um, pre prepping for a Ruth Stout garden bed. And uh, if you're not familiar with Ruth Stout gardening, it's a deep mulch system that utilizes primarily hay, although you can use leaves and other um, types of mulch. But it's a deep mulch system that was developed by a lady by the name of Ruth Stout that uses predominantly hay as, as the mulch. And kind of the idea is that you pull back the hay, you plant in the, the, the soil underneath, and, uh, and then the hay suppresses the weeds. And as it rots down, it feeds the soil, and then you add more, more hay and kind of repeat the process. And so today what I did is I got some of our compost out. I spread it around the area where we're going to be putting this garden bed. And then uh, I will be getting some hay from a friend of mine, spreading that out. And eventually I'll be putting up a perimeter fence of using wooden snow uh, fence as kind of a, well, predator protection, mainly against deer um, to try to hopefully keep them out. So that's what I did today. I also did something yesterday and I wasn't quite sure where to put this. I wasn't sure if I should put it in the homestead happenings or if I should put it in the community corner. I opted to drop it in here. But I actually went to a friend's house last night, um, a family that has bought some pigs off of us in the past, and they had bought a bread gilt from us, and so her litter needed to be castrated. Now, folks, that is my absolute uh, least favorite chore on the homestead. I absolutely hate to castrate pigs. But if you have pigs, you're raising pigs, it's a necessary chore. And we'll get into why it's necessary in another episode. But uh, I, 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 I absolutely hate doing it because I don't want to cause my animals any unnecessary pain. Uh, I don't like to cause my, my animals pain at all. And yet this is, from my perspective, a necessary, a necessary thing. And, but I still absolutely hate it. Anyhow, <laughs> um, my, my friends asked me to come up and show them how to castrate pigs because they didn't know how to do it. And so to me, it's one of the beautiful things about homesteading from the standpoint of the community aspect is being able to pass on those skills um, and that knowledge that you've been entrusted with. And so I was able to pay that forward last night. And while I absolutely hate the task, I absolutely love being able to share with other people uh, those kinds of skills so that they can hopefully in the future be able to handle that themselves. Um, and so that's where I was last night. So that's what's been going on here, uh, here on 3B Farm and Homestead. Um, really a lot of stuff going on here considering the fact that, you know, it is wintertime, things are starting to slow down for us but still quite a bit of homesteading stuff happened here this week. Let's go on to our Community Corner segment on this episode. This week I kind of, well, I, I don't want to say I messed up because it wasn't that big of a deal. I don't want to over-exaggerate um, it, but I did something that really ended up, uh, well, it made me feel really bad. And that is I was scrolling through my Facebook feed and uh, honestly, folks, I probably spend way too much time on Facebook, um, but I was scrolling through my Facebook feed and one of those sponsored ads was for winter gloves and I was going to scroll on by and then there was something about the actor in the screenshot of the movie for this ad that kind of looked familiar and so I scrolled back and sure enough, it was Al Lumna from Lumna Acres YouTube channel. And I absolutely love Al's channel. Uh, he, his was one of the first ones I started watching because of him having American guinea hogs. I believe he had American guinea hogs at the time. Um, I could be wrong on that, but his was one of the first YouTube channels that I started watching. And so anyhow, I was, I was really excited about that. I thought, here it is. 
Al has gone from product placements in his YouTube channel uh, to now being, you know, kind of endorsing these these gloves. Got an endorsement deal, kind of like a a sports star, you know, Michael Jordan or LeBron James. Here he is, uh, you know, he's got this endorsement deal. I was very excited about it, so I took a screenshot of it and I posted it to a group that we were uh, we are both members of. Well, long story short, come to find out, Al is not really got an endorsement deal. They stole footage from one of his YouTube videos and are using it to sell these gloves. And in fact, the gloves that he had on in the video aren't even the gloves that they're selling. And boy, did I feel really, really bad because I felt like, man, here I am rubbing salt in a wound because I was genuinely excited for him. You know, I'm like, man, he's got success. He's got this endorsement deal. So the reason why I bring this up in the community corners, because I think a lot of times we as homesteaders, we want to support um, fellow homesteaders. At least I do. And so you might run across something like that and you might think, well, man, this would be a great way for me to support Al. If you see that video, if you see those gloves, if you see it in your, and I can't remember, it's actually showed up under a couple of different product names for me. But if you happen to be scrolling through your your Facebook feed and you see Al Lumna and a green coat hawking some kind of a winter glove, do not buy it, okay? It's a rip off. I don't know if the gloves are any good. I don't really care about that. They may be the greatest gloves since sliced bread, but if they are ripping off Al, then I don't like that. And so my community corner today is a PSA. Do not buy those gloves. If you want to support Al's channel, jump over to Al's channel and support him through that directly. But those gloves are a, it's a, I don't want to say it's a scam. The gloves may be great, but to me, man, ripping off somebody's content is really, really low. And so today's community corner is a public service announcement on behalf of Al Lumna, even though Al really doesn't need my help. But folks, I just happen to see that. And here, I, again, I was genuinely excited. You know, uh, somebody from our community was making it big. Not so much. All right, let's move on to this episode's Charting the Course. Now, in uh, our second episode, I attempted to answer, and I think I answered the question, what is homesteading? I at least defined it from my perspective. In our last episode, in episode number three, we talked about how does one get started homesteading. On this episode, I want to answer the question, why homestead? Or maybe a better way to ask this question is, why do we homestead? Now, I want to be very, very clear about something, and that is this. Well, I believe that everybody can homestead. And going back to our definition of homesteading, I certainly believe that anybody can homestead. I don't necessarily believe that everybody should homestead. Uh, homesteading is a big commitment, and it's one of those things that if your heart isn't in it and you don't love it, then you shouldn't do it. You're not going to be successful at it. Now, I understand that there are some times when people have to do it. And I shared with you in episode number one about our family history, our story, and my strong belief that if our families, both my wife and I, if our families did not raise and grow our own food when we were kids, there are times when we probably would have gone hungry. And the same holds true for our parents and our grandparents and so on and so forth. There is a certain sense to where our families homesteaded because they have to. And I understand that there are some people that may fall into that category. Although I really believe in our day and age, just because of how things are structured from, from a social program perspective, that probably doesn't hold true any longer. But while I do recognize that there may be some people who homestead because they have to, I I do think that those people in today's day and age are probably far, few and far between. And so I don't want anybody to come away with any with the, the thought that I think that everybody should live this lifestyle because I don't. 
I don't think that homesteading is for everybody. But on this episode, I do want to share some of the reasons why I think you should consider homesteading. And these are some of the reasons why, especially for people who are on the fence about it, or maybe are new to the idea of homesteading, hopefully this will be helpful to you and it may push you on down the road towards a homesteading journey. And you may listen to this and say, you know what, I am not interested in that. And it may push you away. And that's all good because you need to live your, you need to walk your path. You need to live out your journey. But why do we homestead? Well, the first reason is because it's good for you. And I really believe it's good for you in a variety of different ways. First of all, I believe that it's good for you because the food that you are going to raise and grow is going to be a much better product. It's going to taste better. It's going to nutritionally be better. It's going to be fresher. It's going to be a better product. Let me give you, let's just talk about tomatoes, for example. You go and buy a tomato from the grocery store, and by and large, those tomatoes have very bad, I don't want to say bad, but the texture isn't the greatest, the taste isn't the greatest. They may be pretty looking, but taste and texture-wise, there's a lot to be desired. Now, you compare that to standing in the middle of your garden and picking a sun-ripened tomato and biting into that. Now that tomato may not be the prettiest looking fruit. In fact, probably if you've got an heirloom tomato, it's gonna be an ugly looking fruit. But you bite into that sun-warm tomato and those, those juices are just dripping down your chin. And let me tell you something, folks. There is no better tomato in all of tomatodom. <laughs> in all of the world, there's no better tomato than that tomato. Why is that? Because those heirloom tomatoes have been dre have been have been bred for generations for taste and for texture. And not only that, but you are picking that fruit at the height of ripeness. And so I don't think it's all in your head. I don't think it's just that, well, I I, I I've gotta think that it tastes it better. No, it's a better product. And if it's a better product, if it tastes better, then I believe that you're going to eat better. And if you eat better, that's better for you. And so I believe that homesteading is good for you because you're producing a better product, which is going to lead to a better uh, lifestyle from the standpoint of what you eat. But not only that, I believe that homesteading is good for you because it is going to keep you active. If you're going to be successful at homesteading, if you're going to be successful at raising and growing food, trust me when I tell you this, that the recipe for success is not sitting on the couch eating Cheetos, watching TV, and getting fat. You are not going to be successful in homesteading if that's what you do. So what is homesteading going to do? It is going to push you off the couch. It's going to push you outdoors. It's going to lead to a more active lifestyle. Now, I know in our day and age that people in suburbia have replaced the active lifestyle that came with a farm type living that our, our, our parents and grandparents grew up around. They've replaced that with things like CrossFit and going to the gym and running and jogging and all that kind of stuff. And, and I'm not knocking any of that, but let me tell you something, folks. I did that for, for a couple of years. I went to the gym faithfully. I think it was like three or four days a week I went to the gym. And trust me when I tell you, I hated every blessed minute I was at the gym. Hated it, hated it, hated it, hated it. Let me tell you something. I would much rather muck out a pig pen. I would much rather shovel out a chicken coop than go to the gym and lift weights. I absolutely, now if that's your jam, I'm not knocking it. You do you and I'm happy for you. But let me tell you something, I hated every minute of it. And so what is it? The gym, has, I'm sorry, the homestead has become my gym. Instead of 
lifting weights, I'm lifting feed bags. Instead of doing uh, calisthenics, I'm out, you know, today um, shoveling a compost and raking compost and all of those kinds of things. And so what is it? Homesteading, I believe, if you're going to be successful at it, it's going to lead to a more active lifestyle. Jumping back to the food for a minute, the other thing about homesteading is when you're raising and growing your own food, when you're preserving your own food, you have control over what goes into that product. Better yet, you know what's not in that product. Now, I know I could go down to Aldi's and I could buy a boatload of canned green beans and, and probably save a lot of money when I factor in my time and energy and effort that it takes to can up green beans on the homestead. But let me tell you something, I know when I crack open that can of green beans in the middle of winter, I know what's not in there. I know what went in there. I know that it was good, it was good beans that went in there, but I also know there's no preservatives. There's, with the exception of a little bit of salt, it's beans, water, and salt. That's it. I know what's not in my food. I know how my animals were raised. I know what's not in them. And to me, that's an important part, uh, an important driving factor behind why I homestead. But also, I think, you know, I, I talked a little bit when I was talking about tomatoes, about the sense of satisfaction and kind of that, you know, getting that in your head and that makes you think that things taste better. But I think there is something to be said for your mental health that homesteading can be uh, very, very good for your mental health because there's a sense of satisfaction that comes by raising and growing your own food. When you sit down to a meal and you look at that plate and on that plate, maybe 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, I don't know, but a big percentage of the food that's on that plate is something that you had a direct uh, impact in raising and producing and preserving there is such a great sense of satisfaction that comes from that, that it's just, it's, I, I, I absolutely love it. When I sit down to some eggs and bacon, and I know that I've raised those chickens that laid those eggs from a chick, and I raised those pigs that produce that bacon from piglets, there is a sense of satisfaction that is unparalleled. Now, do I think that maybe that adds a, a certain um, level of taste? It bumps up the taste a, a notch? Maybe it does. But I do believe, especially in this day and age where people are, many people are working jobs where they don't find a sense of satisfaction, a sense of fulfillment. Um, it's just a job. It's a paycheck because they're trying to put a roof over their heads uh, over their kids' heads or trying to put food on the table and all those kinds of things. But there are a lot of people who are lacking purpose. There are a lot of people who are lacking a, 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 a sense of, of accomplishment in life. And homesteading certainly can do that. Now, that's not to say that sometimes homesteading can, can uh, knock you down and beat you up. It certainly can. But, but folks, when you sit down to a meal and you look at that and you, or, or your, your, um, you know, it's it's winter time, and and you're enjoying the heat from your stove, uh, that is that is being generated from wood that you've harvested. Oh, folks, there's a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment that comes from that that I think makes homesteading good for you. But not only is homesteading good for you, homesteading is good for families. Now, all of those things that I talked about roll up, I think. Happy, healthy individuals generally mean happy, healthy families. But also, when you're homesteading and you have kids, having animals, having a garden, those kinds of things teach kids a sense of responsibility unlike anything else. But it also teaches kids where their food comes from. And when you are putting effort into raising food, you're going to appreciate it a whole heck of a lot more. 
but I also believe that it produces in our kids a certain work ethic. In fact, there are some people I know who are involved in HR that if they see, they've told me this, if they see that somebody was raised on a farm, they weight that rather heavily because they automatically assume that that person has a work ethic, that they know how to work hard, they know how to work until a, 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 a task is complete. And, and so I believe that we are helping our kids and whether our kids decide to be homesteaders, whether they decide to do anything like that, in the future it doesn't matter. We're instilling in them a work ethic and I think that's important. The other thing as well is I think that when you work together as a family towards the goal of raising and growing food, it bonds you together. It binds you together in, in a very, very special way. And in our day and age where families are really pulled in so many different directions, you know, you, you've got kids sporting events and kids music events and and this club and that club and and it seems like if you've got two or three kids you're running four or five different directions at the same time and it's all kinds when you ra when you raise and grow food there's something about that that just binds your family together i think in ways that are very 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 special not only is homesteading good for you as an individual not only is homesteading good for you as a family but i also believe that homesteading is good for the community again happy healthy individuals tend to lead to happy, healthy families, and happy, healthy families have a tendency to lead towards happy, healthy communities. But I also think there's a sense to where it's good for your community because as homesteaders, a lot of times we may have an abundance. Maybe squash does really well one year, or maybe we've got an overabundance of eggs, or we decide to overproduce in a certain area. And what are we able to do? Maybe we are able to share that abundance with our neighbors. Or we have people that we know who uh, have no interest in living this lifestyle, but they want good, wholesome food. And so we can sell that to them and generate some income for our, our families and for our homestead. But we're also helping our communities to eat better, to eat healthier food. But I also think that homesteading is also very good for the community because as homesteaders, a lot of times we're going to have a tendency to support small businesses. In our town, there is a small mom and pop uh, fa family feed store. And I try to spend as much money as I can there before I go to Tractor Supply. Now, it's not to say that I don't shop at Tractor Supply. I certainly do. But I try to go to my local feed store first. And so what happens is, as homesteaders, we're going to be a little bit more focused, I think, on keeping money in our local communities where it makes sense. And so that helps out our community as well. We also are stewarding skills that I think are very, very important. And we're helping to keep alive traditions that I think are, very, and who knows what the future holds. But we may be keeping alive a particular breed of animal helping to, in our case the american guinea hog uh, is on the livestock conservancy uh, watch list and so we're helping a breed uh, recover um, it may be that you are saving seeds and you've got some kind of a family heirloom uh, tomato that your family has been stewarding that seed for generations and who knows that may become very important on down the road there are other skills that you may be developing and you may be passing on that again who knows what the future holds but that is going to be or it could be vital for your community but you've also heard me talk about homesteading thriving within the context of community and I believe, again, that's another reason why homesteading is important, is because in the context of community, it can help people bond together. And maybe it's over uh, a, a great meal, maybe it's over passing on skills like I did with my friend last night, teaching him how to castrate pigs. But again, we are building community and homesteading because it's good for us as individuals, because it's good for us as families, I believe that it is good for us as communities. But not only is it good for us as 
individuals, families, and communities, I also believe that homesteading is good for the environment. Now, back when I was talking about in episode number two, and I was talking about uh, self-sufficiency, self-reliance, and sustainability, and how I use the term sustainability more in the context of systems on our homestead, but this is where I'm getting to the uh, using the, the sustainability in the context of environmental impact. I believe that as homesteaders, we are, generally speaking, going to be a little bit more focused not only on our impact on the environment, but what can we do actively to minimize that impact and to be good stewards of the resources that God has entrusted us with. And so as homesteaders, we're going to be focused on raising and growing food locally, which means that food's going to travel less because, well, it, instead of it coming from Chile, it's come from my backyard. Instead of it coming from California and I'm in New York, it's come from my backyard, right? Food has traveled less, which means there's less environmental impact on the food uh, because of the food that I eat. But we also see ourselves as stewards of resources, stewards of the land, stewards of the animals, stewards of the seeds that we have. We have a tendency to look at things from the standpoint of how can I reduce, reuse, recycle? How can I use things that otherwise might be seen as waste, as inputs to another process? How can I take leaves and turn them into mulch or turn them into compost, which then I can use on my garden to grow vegetables that I can use to feed my family or that I can use to feed my animals, right? We see ourselves as stewards of resources. But not only that, I mentioned this a little bit from the standpoint of kids understanding where food comes from and knowing what food costs. But also as homesteaders, we understand the real cost of raising real food. And so if, we if we've got blood, sweat, and tears invested into something, but not only that, we've got dollars invested into something, we're going to treat it, I think, with a lot more respect. And we're going to have a lot less tendency to waste food, to waste things, because we understand there's a real cost to raising real food. And so when I harvest a pig, I want to use everything but the squeal, right? I want to minimize the amount of waste that I have because I understand what went into raising that animal and the fact that it's given its life so that I can now live. And so there's a sanctity to that. There's there's uh, um, something to be said about our need to cherish that, to respect that, and we are going to be less likely to take it for granted and less likely to waste it, which means that we are going to have a much more positive impact on our environment. So those are just some of my reasons why I homestead. Now, what are some reasons that you homestead? What did I miss? I'm sure I didn't think of everything. <laughs> in fact, I'm sure I probably missed quite a number of benefits of living the homesteading lifestyle. But as I close out this segment, I want to reiterate that I, again, do not believe that homesteading is for everyone. While all of this list of benefits are great and I believe in them and they are a big part of the reason why we do what we do, I don't believe this is for everyone. So let me just kind of close this segment out by sharing this story with you. About 10 years ago, I was at uh, a get together, and it might have been even a little bit longer than that ago. I was at a family get together, and it was with my dad's side of the family, and one of his cousins, so it would be what, a first cousin once removed, I guess, for me. I don't know. I lose track of that, or a second, I don't know. But anyhow, my dad's first cousin had gotten back into farming. He had uh, decided to start milking some cows. And I jokingly said to him, Linus, what in the world did you get back into this for? You know you can't make any money doing this. And he looked at me and he kind of shook his head and he said, I know, Brian, but I've got to do it. It's in my blood. Later on that same summer, I was at a family get-together on my grandmother's side of the family. 
So Linus is from my grandfather's side. I was at my grandmother's side of the family and I was visiting with my cousin Sid and he had recently got back into milking cows. And I said to him the same thing that I said to Linus. I said, Sid, what in the world did you get back into milking cows for? You know you can't make any money doing that. And he looked at me and he kind of shook his head and he said almost verbatim, yeah, Brian, I know, but I've got to do it. It's in my blood. And folks, I don't know how else to explain this to you with regards to homesteading, but I do believe that there is a certain sense of where you almost have to do it because there's something that drives you from inside. It's in your blood. And if you find yourself in that situation, then I would strongly urge you, if you aren't already, to join us on the homestead journey. And if you're on the homestead journey and you've been feeling a little bit discouraged lately, keep trucking. Keep pressing on because I really believe it's worth it. All right, let's jump on over to this episode's homestead hack segment. And this episode's homestead hack is something that I actually learned by watching Justin Rhodes' YouTube channel. And that is the importance or the benefits of a work apron on the homestead. Now, I have to admit, when I first saw Justin Rhodes wearing a work apron, I kind of poo-pooed it a little bit. I thought it was a shtick, so to speak. Um, but there was something that just kept saying to me, you got to give it a try. And so I went on Amazon. I ordered one. It cost me like 23 bucks or something like that. Had it shipped to me. And let me tell you something, folks. That has been extremely beneficial to me. As I shared with you, I work an off-farm job. I work about five minutes away from my house. So I am very, very lucky and fortunate, blessed, shall we say, to come home every day for lunch or just about every day for lunch. And a lot of times what I'll do is I want to maybe get a quick homesteading task done. And so what I'll do is I'll throw on my work apron. I'll go out. I'll do my task. Come back in. Bam, head back to work. And I have not ruined or gotten my work clothes dirty. I'm also involved in a lot of uh, activities where I have meetings in the evening, and so the same thing applies. I'll come home from uh, work, and I'll throw the work apron on, I'll feed the animals, I might do a task here or there, and it has saved so many of my good clothes because I've got this work apron on. But beyond that, when you're out doing tasks and you're wanting to carry stuff along with you, having when I'm planting the garden, I'll have packets of seeds in the pockets, and I'll have... Um, some um, markers for where I'm planting things. Uh, when I'm out working on fence, I'll have some tools and maybe some clips in the pockets. And so having a work apron on the homestead to me has been something that's very, very huge. Now, you don't have to go out and buy an expensive artisan made one. If you want to do that, certainly be my guest. But the ones that I use, my wife and my son use, were like, less than 25 bucks on Amazon. I've been very, very happy with that. It's been something that's been very, very beneficial. And so I highly recommend a work apron. I think that's something that can be very, very helpful to people, especially those of us that work those off-farm jobs and maybe have the opportunity to come home at lunch, get something done, not get our work clothes dirty, check it out. Uh, a work apron, I think, will be very, very beneficial to you. So folks, that's the end of this episode of The Homestead Journey. I hope you've enjoyed it. Again, if you want to get in contact with us, you can reach us at the Homestead Journey Podcast at gmail.com. We're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash the Homestead Journey Podcast, uh, youtube.com slash C slash 3B Farm and Homestead, and facebook.com slash 3B Farm NY. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, please go ahead and leave us a review. And also, if you could, share this podcast with other people that you think might find it enjoyable and helpful. Until next time, everybody, keep up the good work.